Yes, that's your question. Yes, Lord Jesus. I have three questions to ask. My first question goes on like this. I was at, is it possible for someone, for me to see Jesus Christ in a cassette? I said, just, have, just flash to me. And I saw Jesus Christ there. You can see Jesus Christ anywhere. You can see him even in the toilet. You can see him when you are reading your boyfriend's letter. You just appear there, fear. In fact, you can see him if you are lying down the same bed with your boyfriend. He can appear. So, for Jesus Christ, you can see him anywhere, depending on what is the purpose for that. Okay. My second question is that <laughs> I went to a church around this area. Joshua, yes. Very close to us. No, not the one, but it's also okay. very close Another to one. us. Okay. Yes. Thank you. But I found out that everybody here to go to that church. And I went there for the purpose that I want to pass night there. Everybody here. Some people here go there. Sorry go there. to say. Okay. So, and I went there for accommodation. I just want to sleep there. Yes. And along the line, I need to follow what they are doing. After the program, I will pass night and I will be going home. And I had a testimony that they shared. And I said, well, let me go for see for deliverance from them also but when i'm about to go and sleep it's in my mind that i'm saying all this when i'm about to go and sleep i heard a voice that said read ezekiel 13 verse 2 to 10. when i now read it they are talking about a wrong prophecy mm, false pastors yes. yes so i now ask again that does it mean that this church is not right please i want you to illustrate that ezekiel 13 from verse 2 to 10 to me uh, if you don't mind which church is that divine majesty church divine majesty yes so what is your question i should explain ezekiel 13 yeah, i want you to explain it very ezekiel well 13 me. is speaking about those who are saying the lord said the lord said when god did not send them so he's telling you it's that Ezekiel 13 is warning false pastors and false prophets. That's all. The last one is that I was sitting down here one day during ministration, they were giving a special number, and I saw Jesus Christ at this altar here at the cross of Calvary. All his body is full of blood. And since that day, I have not seen someone to narrate this issue to. I don't know the meaning of that. You is Jesus Christ revealing himself to you as your savior and what he did to save you. That's all. It's a message for you, yourself. God bless you. Can I take this question from Spain? Brother Unduka is saying, Shalom Church, why did God allow Samuel to act as high priest by offering the important sacrifices throughout Israel when he was not eligible because he was not a direct descendant of Aaron why did why did you say God allowed everyone that he did was in the instruction of God every sacrifice he went to do was God telling him to go and do it that is the important thing there and he was not offering it in the temple temple worship was for the lineage of levi at the altar in the temple but when god would send him to go somewhere he specifically tell him what to do what sacrifice to do for that specific purpose it was an instruction of god Remember, he was a prophet. God bless you. Okay. So I want to ask a question. This question goes this way. David was a king and wanted to build a house for God. But God says he will not build a house because they have shed and all blood. That one of his sons will take over and build a house. Being Solomon. 
But David committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed the husband. But when the Lord was about to select to tell David the, one of his sons that was going to build the temple, he went and selected Solomon from the, the same woman that he committed adultery from. So my question is, if David did not marry that woman by killing the husband, does he mean the king wouldn't have come off? That would take over his seat. Praise the Lord. The, I, if I, I want to understand your the Solomon was he a product of the adultery he committed? No, sir. So, what's your question, sir? My what? I, my question there is: the, the 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 Solomon was a product of the woman, but not that it, it was he not had a, married her. No? Now he's his wife. God made sure that child from that adulterous act did not live, but he married her. She was his wife. And she gave birth. Now, the question you want to ask is, why would I have expected that he would have chosen another child from a better woman? Why that? It is because God also wanted to display the uniqueness of who he is. His mercy. So that it is not he that will it, nor he that run it, but God that showed mercy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We here that are product of grace today, what did you do to deserve it? That is what he has demonstrated in choosing Solomon from Beersheba rather than from any of those other women he had married properly. For you to understand grace. God bless you. Thank you, sir. I want to add this second question. Is that the last question for you? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, concerning uh, forgiveness and mercy, we have just said now, many of us Today in the Christian dawn, the Bible talks about forgiveness. That when one offends you, you forgive him. So, because if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. But today, when one offends someone now, it becomes an opportunity for the person to lock himself inside the room and begin to pray for the person to die by Holy Ghost by fire. And instead of forgiving the person, the we now go about asking the Holy Ghost. Send it. In fact, you see someone living the same uh, yard with, with his neighbor. Because his neighbor offended him. Two of them are Christians. Is this one who released the Holy Ghost thunder? This one who released the Holy Ghost bullet? And the three will be ascending from one to another. And the Bible also makes us to understand that we should pursue peace. Even when peace is running away. But now, instead of us to pursue peace now and unity and forgive, now we are releasing Holy Ghost thunder, Holy Ghost atomic bomb. At the end of the day, Christian, maybe from this church, this one from this, even from the same church, releasing the Holy Ghost fire. I don't know what you would throw, like to throw your light about it. I, I want you to balance this thing very well. When you want to look at uh, obeying scriptures, look at it very well because scriptures don't fight scriptures. And you don't hold on to only one scripture and run off. Learn to balance it. So it's good to have a proper understanding of the scripture. Now, there is a way we are supposed to relate with one another as brethren. But I also want you to know that the church has reached a stage now. We are the same apostle Paul that taught us to pursue peace with all men. He handed over somebody to the devil. Am I correct? Yes, but he's the one that said pursue peace. Then yet, somebody else offended him and he said he handed him over to the devil to learn not to blaspheme. So you must balance it. Now the same Bible that said we should forgive, then came down again and said that 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So, it lets us know that although we walk in the flesh, we, 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 uh, how did he put it? We do not war after the flesh. It means there is a battle to be fought. Now, the Bible, the same Bible now, tells us that if your enemy is hungry, give him food. If he's thirsty, give him drink. He said, by so doing, you are heaping coals of fire upon him. It's the same thing. Now, so it means you should balance these things up. The truth about it is this. He said, our weapons are not carnal. Therefore, it is wrong for a Christian to see somebody who wants to kill him, who is his enemy, to take another, you know, a gun, a stick, whatever it is, a metal, and go and smash the person because he wants to kill you. He said, you don't do that. He said, but our weapons are mighty through God. Now, when you go into your closet, you are now going to die your enemy through God in prayer. When you tell God, judge my enemies, and you report that matter to God, that is the spiritual warfare. So, if you say, Holy Ghost, fire, Holy Ghost, thunder, in your closet, you have not broken scripture. That is how Christians fight their battles. Because you have enemies. And we are fighting battle. We are in spiritual warfare. Sir, uh, what I meant there is that these two are Christians. I have just said it. I said, if the two of them are believers, it is not possible. Now, understand something. I hope you know who a Christian is. We are revelated enough to know that serpents come to church. Tears come to church. So you must be able to know who is a, your Christian brother and who is an enemy that's smoking with a Bible to deal with you. Thank you. Yes. Who did you say? Sir? You say he says it's a Christian brother, Christian brother, then you come and dupe you. You say it's a Christian brother, Christian brother. We know better. By their fruits. You know them. <laughs> okay. Good evening, sir. God bless you. My question is, there's a time you are saying about uh, a sin that is unforgivable against the Holy Ghost. I want to know how many they are and where can we find it in, in the Bible? <laughs> okay, open Matthew chapter 12. It's not me that said it. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that said it. Now, we will read this so that you get the complete picture from verse 22. And please let somebody learn it because there are people that sit down even in a church like this and they, are, they may be guilty of blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Listen carefully. Verse 22, Matthew chapter 12. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. He so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devil but by Belzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Belzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devil by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. 
He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Verse 31. Our emphasis now. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. That is the sin that is not forgiven here, nor hereafter. What is that sin? What is that sin? Listen. That sin is to see the Holy Ghost in action. Then you, out of jealousy, not ignorance. If in ignorance you say it, it is not blasphemy. Unbelievers don't even commit blasphemy because all of us were unbelievers one time. When we watch television and we saw it, the whole side knows they're doing miracles. <laughs> All these people are deceiving people. He say they heal. Make it go hospital now. Not be hospital to sick people. Then which one did they do? You know it's ignorance. Eh? But when anybody who sees somebody genuinely operating the gift of the Holy Ghost and manifesting it, then out of jealousy. So that people will not leave your church and go to that church. Then you cook up a story and begin to say he's using occultic power. You know that he's using a genuine gift. You know he has something you don't have. And you know only God can do that. But you are seeing that people will soon leave your church and go there. Or you are operating your gift. Another gifted person rises up. And very soon, his own level is higher than your own. The people are leaving you now and going there. Then you begin so that people will not, you will not lose your customers. Then you begin to go behind and say, that man, oh, that sister, oh, now Juju should they use. Now this one they use. The Bible says that sin is a blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. It will not be forgiven here, nor hereafter. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Is, yes. it, is it only that one? There is no other one. There is no other one. Any other sin is forgivable. Any other sin. Any other sin. Any one that you have committed, if you have repented and ask God to forgive you, He will forgive you. Any other one. But this one, you know why? Do you know why it is not forgivable? I have not explained that. The reason is this. Any other sin against man, against the son of man, remember, at the time he was saying so, they were busy calling him all manner of names. He came to be humiliated. He came to be rejected. He came to be given a shameful death. You can say anything, but after he has conquered up to the cross, and now he comes back to his church that he has purchased through that suffering, and now he is manifesting himself again in the church, and you want to do to him what you did to him before you sent him to the cross, he will not forgive you. He demonstrated in the Old Testament through Moses. That's why Moses did not go to the promised land. You cannot strike Jesus Christ two times. That rock was Christ. The Bible says so. It's a type of Christ. He says speak. Uh, the first one was strike him. They struck him. They hung him on the cross. And humiliated him. The second time again. He said, speak. Instead of speaking, what did Moses do? He struck him. You cannot strike Christ a second time. And many of us, that is what we are doing. 
crucifying the Lord afresh. The Bible put it that way. And he will never take it again. God bless you. Yes. Praise the Lord, church. That's the last brother. Yes. Yes, um, Pastor, my question goes like this. Um, I remember a place I read in the Bible. He said, it's not the will of God for his people to perish. And according to the question which you answered here, he said that God sees tomorrow from today. Yep. But I now think, as in, inside of me, I, I ask this question. I say, why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah without America? See, since I have, I heard a message here, you, you said that the sin that America is uh, committing is greater than the one Sodom and Gomorrah committed. And I asked, why did God did not destroy America and gave them the power to destroy Sodom? Praise the Lord. If I, is that your question? Yes. My question is, why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah rather than destroying America? Okay, can you, can you open Second Peter chapter 3 in your Bible? Let's read it together. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Go, okay, let's go forward a little bit, backward a little bit, maybe from verse 4. Verse 3. Verse 2. Chapter 3, verse 2. From verse 1. This second epistle beloved yes let me read it so that we can go a bit faster listen to me this is Peter writing he said this second epistle beloved I write unto you in both which I steer up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of, crea of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that. By the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same water kept in store reserved unto what? what is it reserved for? unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men verse 8 but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, what? not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Verse 10. This is where I am going. But the day of the Lord will come, will come, as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are daring shall be burned up. What is your question? My question, sir. You should not ask questions if you are following. Again, I have another question. The first one, is it answered? Yes, sir. I'm true. So, the fact that the sinners, fire never fall on them does not mean that the fire will not fall. Fire will fall. Judgment is hanging. It is thus say the Lord. The days of Noah, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So go back to what it happened. 
God told Noah that he's going to destroy the earth with water. Scientifically, it was not possible for the whole world to perish with water because they didn't have rain. They didn't have rain. In the morning, rain would just, you know, dew would just cover everywhere. No rain, nothing at that time. And the, by calculation, Noah preached 120 years. God waited 120 years before that water came down. Once he said it, it will come to pass. He said the elements here will burn with fervent heat, fire will destroy everything. And they have been saying it for almost 2,000 years. But they say, you are thinking that I stayed long before God, it is just two days yet. Since he said it. Because our own 1,000 years is his own one day. So we have only spent 2,000 years. So as far as God is concerned, when he said I am coming soon, it is only two days yet. The certainty that the destruction is coming. And, and people don't believe that. Because unless they see it, before they believe. Small Ebola now, see everybody. If you want to shake the brother by your side, now he goes, hey brother, God bless you. He's afraid. See how they are putting emergency centers everywhere. Everybody is preparing against this disease that cannot be seen with naked eye. I say, I hope they are also preparing for the fire that will soon come. Ungodly men. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. You just answered my question, the second question, because I wanted to ask, uh, God destroyed the, this earth in the time of Noah. And again, I remember the Bible said he regretted destroying the things that he has created. Now, no, I was not... I don't, I don't know. I don't read that one. I only read that he regretted creating them, not regretted okay. destroying them. Yes, sir. Regretted creating them. Okay. So I now begin to ask, why did God want to destroy the earth the second time? Because of ungodly people who refuse to obey his commandment. He has to clean up. Don't you sometimes clean your house of Nyama Nyama? Eh? Eh? I used to do that, sir. Don't you sometimes clean Nyama Nyama too many cockroaches. Yes, too many. Don't you sometimes uh, too much mosquitoes. You sanitize everywhere. This earth shall be sanitized very soon Thank by you, God sir. himself. Yes, sister. God bless you, sir. God bless you. My question is from Roman that say, if one died, you are paid for his sin. Eh? Rom the book of Roman. That said that if one died that you have paid for his sins. I don't know which scripture we have for Romans. Read it. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 that said, For the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. No, understand that scripture first. The wages of sin is dead. That is the penalty yes. for committing sin is dead. This death is not the one all of us are dying from Ebola and the rest of This death is in Revelation chapter 20. The second death. Where everybody will enter fire. All sinners will enter there. That is the death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Christ which he is offering us now. If you reject eternal life then you are entering you get your reward in the, the lake of fire. My question is this. I was studying with one Jehovah Witness. Yes. So she said that the, if one died, that the person will pay for his sin. We are, we are talking about resurrection. The resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous. So she said that if one died, that person will pay for his sins. That there is no resurrection. That if you die, if you, are, if you have opportunity now, and you are hearing the word of God, you do not repent. If you die, you, you, are, you are not going to be resurrected. There is nothing like judgment again that you have paid for your sins. Well, from my explanation now, you know that whoever you met, you know, is wrong. Open 
uh, Revelation chapter 20. Let's read it from verse 4. Revelation chapter 20. Sister, just watch the screen. Oh, okay, you can follow if you are there. From verse 4. And I'm reading it down. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. That is, you know, okay. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ. How many years? A thousand years, verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years we have finished. This is the first resurrection. Number six. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So there is a second death. God bless you. My second question is from Revelation chapter 14 verse 14. They are talking about the harvest. So I don't really understand. Read it. Let's hear I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a, in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap. Because the time to reap has come. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was city, seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. My question is this. I was studying with that woman. She was saying that the harvest was God taking away the evil was out of the earth. So I do not really... Understand. Yes now, but how will he take away the evil ones out of the earth? Through the white throne judgment. Now, notice something here. There are two judgments that are awaiting unbelievers. The first judgment is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, they are is when Christ will be coming to start the 1,000 years reign together with the bride. When he will be coming, it is called the day of the Lord. That is when Matthew 25, judgment of nations will begin. You are, you are a new member in the church? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you people give her the divine agenda? The message to listen to it. Do you have DVD player at home? Yes, sir. Good. Do you have NEPA regularly in your house? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> now, <laughs> no, it's okay for the benefit of somebody who may want to know what you are asking. So, that period, that period, when it speaks about the wine press there, that is judgment. There's going to be bloodshed. That is where you will see all the vials that will be poured on the earth and then you know all the, uh, the in short it is a type of judgment that is known as the day of the lord give her the message i preached titled the day of the lord and the bible say woe is he that desires the day of the lord anybody that does not go in the rapture and you are alive the bible says that he will reel the earth like a pendulum. Shake all the shakebus. And he said, by the time he finished, he said, man will be 
few scarce as gold. It will leave just few people on earth to just enter the millennium and repopulate the earth. It will clean up the earth of all the nonsense that's been going on. Rearrange the whole earth. Rearrange the weather. Rearrange everything. That is what it will do. By the time it finish, you jam a human being. You say, ah, you are alive? Amen. <laughs> okay. Is that the one? Is that the tip? Which one is that? Divine, divine agenda and uh, the day of the Lord. Thank you. Give her. Church, praise the Lord. Hello. Sir, my question is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 3. If you have not listened to this message, please go to the tape stand and pick one for yourself. I'm telling you, after listening to that message and still joke with eternal life, then I know you are a serpent seed. Everyone that has small Holy Ghost in you, when you listen to that, you will quickly run back to the cross from the world and hold to the cross. I'm telling you, we preach it. I have preached it. I have repeated it, repeated it several times. And thank God we have a television station. They have been playing it and playing it for people to know what is awaiting those who will not go in the rapture. When that song says, When that sends you march to heaven with Jesus as their leader. Eh? Marching as what? How did that song say?
Come. Now those who go sing after we are gone. Learn it very well. But one of these days you will come for vigil here. You will not see some of us. Because me, this heaven, I must go. I don't know who else here wants to go. 